Example 130. An article distributed by the Associated Press included these results from a nationwide survey. Of 880 randomly selected drivers, 56% admitted that they run red lights. Test the claim that the majority of all Americans run red lights. So test the claim indicates it's a hypothesis test, and the majority of all Americans runs red lights implies that we're talking greater than 50%. So the claim here is that the proportion of people who run red lights is greater than 50%, or 0 0.50 as a decimal. Let's do the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The claim here has a greater than symbol. That means it's the same as the alternative hypothesis. So we'll use greater than 0 0.50. Now the opposite idea would be the null hypothesis, so less than or equal to 0 0.50. From there, we're going to write down the data from the problem. There isn't many, much data in these problems. All we have to have is a sample size. In that case, we have 880. We'll need to have a sample proportion, so a p hat, in other words. And the p hat here is uh, 0 0.56, 0 0.56. And then lastly, we'll need to have a significance level, alpha. Now, in the problem, I don't see a significance level. It's not given, so we'll assume it's 0 0.05, which is the default case. From there, we're going to take that and enter it into our test stat. So let's go ahead and do that right next door to this. So the test stat formula is, remember, p hat minus the proportion from the null hypothesis, the square root of the proportion from the null hypothesis, its complement divided by n. OK, so the proportion from the null hypothesis, uh, sorry, let's start with the p hat. The p hat is 0.56. And then the proportion from the null hypothesis is 0.50. And then we will divide by the square root of the value from the null, which is 0 0.50, its complement, which of course will also be 0 0.50, so we'll just use 0 0.5 and 0.5, and then divided by n, which is 880. So remember where the q naught comes from. It's whatever is left over from 100 when you subtract this. So 50% minus 100%, or 100%, pardon me, minus 50% gives you 50%. So it's 0.5 and 0.5. These two numbers must add up to 1, in other words, right? OK, so let's work out the test stat and see what that gives us. OK, so at the top of the parenthesis, we'll have 0 0.06 ultimately, but let's work it out. 0.56 minus 0.50. Close that up and divide by. Then we'll have the square root in the denominator, and it'll be 0.5 times 0.5 divided by 880. All right, close that up, hit Enter, and you get 3.56. 3.56 approximately, right? So that is the approximate z-score value for the problem. Now once you have that, your next step is to draw a bell curve and to place a critical value on the curve. So draw a bell curve, and then we're going to look at HA to determine whether it's one-tailed, two-tails, and if it's one-tailed, if it's left-tailed or right-tailed. So looking at this greater than symbol, it looks like it is a right-tailed test, right? Remember that greater than is like an arrow pointing to the right telling us it's a right-tailed test. So we'll need to get the critical value down here. All right, so let's try to figure out what that is. Now, the alpha for this problem is 0 0.05, so we're going to be looking at 5% in one tail on the t chart, but we're going to go all the way down to the bottom where they locate the z values on that chart. So let's go do that now. Okay, so we're looking at 0 0.05 in one tail and going straight to the bottom. And we see the answer is 1.645. Okay, so we found the value 1.645. And that is your critical value. Now compare that to our test stat. Our test stat is approximately 3.56. It's very large as a value, and that value will certainly be in the tail here, the shaded tail, where we reject the null hypothesis. So it's in our rejection region, and we will say that we reject HO as a result, and therefore we support HA as a result. Now, looking at that pair of initial conclusions, let's look at our claim and see which one applies here. Since our claim is the same as HA in this particular problem, we're going to circle that one and say that we should word our answer as the sample data support the claim. So we're going to say the sample data support the claim. 
the sample data support the claim. Okay, and the claim of course here is that a majority of Americans run red lights. So of course it probably doesn't mean they run red lights all the time, but I guess a lot of us have had a scenario where we've actually technically driven through a red light because maybe it was turning red and we didn't stop in time, so we went right through it. All right, so there it is.